I like to break the process up into three phases. Phase one is everything from deal sourcing all the way up to signing your LOI and PSA. Phase two is getting from your LOI and PSA to closing. And phase three is getting from closing all the way to your eventual sale. You should be submitting an LOI. That's the question, right? When should you submit an LOI? Once you've fully completed phase one. And phase one means that you have, in my opinion, you've found the deal, you have analyzed all the T12, the rent roll, and you've drafted questions for the broker, got those questions answered, you've gone back and readdressed your underwriting that you performed on the deal to get in line with the answers you received from the broker. You performed a CMA and a loss to lease analysis and a market rent premium analysis to understand what your unit renovations are going to yield on top of your current loss to lease projections. You then take all that information, you summarize it, see if there's any flaws, any holes in your analysis and why this deal makes sense. Go back to the broker, get more questions answered, bring it back. At that point, take your litany of files and information, boil it down into one or two pages, take it to sponsors that you should have been talking to for the entire process of phase one and ideally before phase one, have their relationship already going. And finally, once you have a summarized one pager and a sponsor that you have a relationship with, bring that deal to the sponsor. Say, I know this deal meets your criteria for these reasons. Here's a summarized way to look at the deal. And then if the sponsor says, yes, I like the deal, let's move forward. Then you submit an LOI with the at that point with the sponsor on board. And the reason you have to do that is if I came to you and said, hey, will you co-sign this loan for me for a brand new Maserati? The contract's already written. I've already signed it. You get absolutely no say in the interest rate or the terms or any of the issues that come with buying a Maserati. But I just need you to sign this document. You would never do it because part of the value of a sponsor is the years of experience and wisdom they have in dealing with brokers, analyzing properties, and mitigating risk. Yep. You always wait to sign the LOI or submit an LOI until you have a sponsor with you. That is going to be the best possible force you have to success. Granted, in markets that we were just coming out of 2021, 2022, when we were getting our first start, we didn't know what we were doing. So we were submitting LOIs without having a sponsor behind us. The way, and because of that, we looked at 96, 97 properties and didn't get a win. We didn't get an agreed upon offer. So we did it the wrong way and we did it the hard way and we learned a lot of lessons. And the first time we actually went to LOI with a sponsor behind us, we got that deal. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. So that's if you should submit an LOI. That's why you should submit an LOI at the time that your sponsor has signed on. It also prevents you from having to submit an LOI without one, failing to get a sponsor, and then going back to the broker and saying, oh, sorry, I know you gave us a chance, but we're gonna have to block out. And the broker goes, great, thanks. I'm gonna put your name in the blacklist and we're never gonna do business with you again. Great. Yep. And all of a sudden you are you know, on a blacklist for that market and you gotta go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Hope Can that I answers the up? question. <laughs>